Deborah Fayrick, CNN, New York. Time to check in our with our out in the open panel. Should they have plenty to say about this? Lauren, Michael DeRoy, welcome back. All right, so let's let's start with the resident Jew on our panel here. I mean, <laughs> you hear this stuff, and it just makes you sick to your stomach. There is absolutely no evidence that anybody other than Al Qaeda was involved with this attack. We made that decision to pull, and then we watched the building collapse. How how upsetting is this to you? Look, uh, we've been kicked around for 2,000 years. The face you're looking at has got a lot of anger in it because of that. That's not a way to live, wandering around the globe, never having a home. It's pretty difficult because every time there's trouble, we're scapegoated. We're not the only ones that are scapegoated, but we're scapegoated by people who are frightened. They don't care. They are paranoid. You cannot debunk this theory. It is madness as well as idiocy to think that the Jews brought down the World Trade Center on 9-11. But you cannot argue logic to someone who is mentally ill. What frightens me is that the whole nation is frightened, and that fear is being fueled by this administration and by the media, not you, just the opposite. I congratulate you, and I'm grateful for it, seriously, to bring this stuff out. Because it is in those times that Jews, like other minorities, better get scared, better get angry, better fight for what's right, and try and convince people courage is the cure for paranoia, not racism. Is this just a smear campaign? I, I, Any semi? I think it's, I agree with Michael. I mean, the, the blame the Jews theme is something that goes back about 2,000 years. I mean, it's a really hardy varietal. But look, I mean, we know who uh, pulled off 911. Uh, Richard Minner writes about it in his book, uh, Disinformation. He quotes directly from, uh, from uh, Osama bin Laden, who, who says, on a tape we found, we calculated in advance the number of casualties from the enemy who would be killed based on the position of the tower. We had notifications since the previous Thursday that the event would take place that day, unquote, says Osama bin Laden himself. But what I mean, is Michael's right in the sense that we have a government that has led us into a war. And most Americans, even the smart of us, smartest of us, sit around and go, now why again are we here well, in the war? We and when there are blanks, we often fill in the blanks. And those blanks are filled in by misinformation, urban legends. We create stories and but, people believe but you're things. you're talking about a very unpopular war. We're talking about 9-11. No, no, but what I'm talking about is that. the war is based upon what our government told us, this fear well, that we have will, from 9-11. This will get worse as the unrest in the Middle East gets worse. This problem will not go away. And the reason it won't go away is because we don't have an administration as we once did that said and counseled us, we have nothing to fear but fear itself. Exactly. We have just the opposite. We have an administration that fuels fear, that puts up the sign every day, that tells us be frightened, stay scared, be worried, and so we are suspicious, we are xenophobic, and we don't like anybody that's think, different from us. How concerned are you that, that these Pogroms conspiracy theories will take even deeper hold? Look, I think it's entirely possible the kind of people who are spreading this sort of stuff will continue to blame the Jews for, for any, anything that can go Jews. wrong. I think it's very important as this uh, war on terror continues to point out exactly who the bad guys are, which are Islamo-fascists who want you, 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 and me dead, and want people dead around the country, and they're engaged in tremendous violence, killing thousands of people all around the world. This problem, starting with, well, even before 9-1-1, the 93 attack, problem, the attack on the USS Cole, this is a really serious enemy we need, need to identify. Yes, it is, and but, but and, there are and reasons why people are open to believe theories. That's my point. There's a, there are reasons why people are open to believe theories, and these reasons will not change yeah. unless our government more actively works to inform us of what the real truth is, so people are not here playing guessing games. Lauren Lake, Michael Gross, DeRoy Murdoch, fascinating discussion. Thank you. Thank you. I, I can, your, your anger uh, was, was uh, palpable during that piece as well. Well, well understood. Larry King Live's coming up in just a few minutes. Hey, Larry, you're going to talk to the owners of Barbara tonight? Yeah, wow, well, who wouldn't be angry with that last No, month? I know, I know. But, you know, it's yeah, astonishing. Probably. Wasn't it the statistic that one in three Americans believe not that particular conspiracy but theory, but one of many? The old Goebbels theory. You can tell a lie long enough, more people will believe it. Well, I have a very, very interesting and disturbing frightening announcement to make regarding our investigation 
of former American Free Press correspondent Christopher Boleyn, who is now officially signed on as a, as the royal consort of Queen Esther Huffschmidt. The investigator did, in fact, launch a preliminary investigation, and as I told you on the air, his indications were that Blinn was receiving money from overseas, as he put it. Now, this is, of course, all very interesting because of the fact that uh, Blinn was crying uh, poor mouth, and, uh, and in fact, evidently, uh, he did have some other sources of income. They have not yet been traced. The investigator also discovered that Boleyn apparently has been visited regularly by an individual or individuals bearing license plates that cannot be traced. So, so obviously, folks, the indications are that uh, Mr. Boleyn is indeed in touch with uh, with undoubtedly high-level intelligence people. Uh, we received a preliminary memo from our investigator. He has been unable to make it to Washington. I can't read you everything because it's a confidential in nature, but uh, some points are worth listening to. He says regarding Boleyn, this case contains many unexplained questions. Each question may be answered, provided someone is willing to endure the risk, the risks that I believe are ever present. This investigator is scared. He says it's risky to investigate Christopher Boleyn. Twice use of the word risk. We have developed that the target is spending more money than he is capable of earning. The target, of course, being, being Mr. Boleyn, the target of the investigation. He is spending more money than he is capable of earning. Very strange here, folks. Our private investigator who looked into Mr. Boleyn, as I've pointed out, has said there's a distinct possibility of involvement by intelligence people of a higher order, and he used the word risk or risks one, two, three times in his preliminary report here. He said that whoever treads these waters should tread carefully. But uh, it's kind of funny, Boleyn spent a great deal of time bashing Makuka. He even, said, he even sent out an email suggesting that Makuka and I were homosexual lovers, but it's come as a surprise to uh, Lisa Giuliani, of course. But uh, in any case, uh, he made a great deal out of the suspicion that uh, Mr. Makuka and Mr. Thorne might be Jewish. Well, you know, it's funny, his wife's names, Brand and Caskell, Helia Brand, Caskell, Boleyn, Brand and Caskell are both Jewish names. Caskell comes, uh, if a derivative of the, the biblical name Ezekiel, and Brand is the name of uh, one of the top Zionists. So uh, there's, a, there's a good likelihood that uh, Boleyn's, uh, not only was his first wife an Israeli, and apparently an Israeli intelligence operative, according to Boleyn's own stories are to be believed, but uh, it appears as though his second wife, if this is indeed his second wife, Talia Brand Caskell, the big bad mama of the Deguello gang, it appears that uh, she, in fact, may be of Jewish origin herself. Whether that means anything, I don't know, but I'm just mentioning it for the record.